today I have stepped into an acre and a half of estate gardens from front to back that are filled and Debbie Pittman and her husband over 38 years have designed and planted. So Debbie, you start over there with water, right? And I have a lot of swamp iris that are in that smallest pool. I have water lilies and um, some, something called corkscrew. Yes. That, what makes this so good? Well, this is so easy is one reason. Um, but I have the pickerel that, you know, just With the takes, purple bloom. You, the only thing we have to do is at the end of the season, we pull some of it out because it's going to be, you know, it loves to grow. The uh, parrot feather is yes. right there. And it, again, all I do at the end of the season is take that out and keep a couple of sprigs and uh, overwinter it, and then the water hyacinth the same way. The water hyacinth is not water, I have some water hyacinth in there that's blooming, but yeah. it will proliferate. So everything yes. is easy. That keeps the algae down, along with the black dye put in. Everything's happy here. Yes, you can and see the dragonflies. Those herons look like they're real, but these no, dragons. No, they're not. <laughs> I know it, but I'm amazed at the number of dragonflies that I see in here. Yeah. And you, you have no mosquitoes. No, and that's one reason I have no mosquitoes. I also have frogs and tadpoles that help. I put the mosquito dunks on the, on the surface to make sure their eggs don't hatch, but it's easy. It really is easy gardening. You know, it's just so amazing. I, I just uh, can't take it all in. And, and everything about it aesthetically, what I hear and smell and see, it's, it's overwhelming to me. It's just, you're nice. That's real truth. And then we can swap over onto the other side and you, you fooled me on this optical illusion. Yes. The, There's really no water going the, under this Right, bridge. it's three separate ponds because oh, they're three different levels. I see a reflection pool and there is a secret. So. Give us the overview and, and how this is achieved, Debbie. Well, this one uh, is our deepest pool. We wanted to put the fish here. Now, I don't have any fancy fish because I don't trust the raccoons or whatever else is going to, herons to come and get them. So it's three feet deep. I just have a lot of goldfish in here. They, um, the, the black dye that I put in the, in the pond keeps the algae, you know, out really. And uh, it also helps show the goldfish when they when they do come up. I use I feed them with the the duckweed, which is also pretty. Yes. You know, we just don't try to let it proliferate too much. If and, if uh, uh, if it gets out of hand, you just dip it out. Right, right. You do, but it doesn't. The, with whatever I put in here, those fish will go. It's that pond over there where I. It's kind of like my. I grow it there and then put it in here for the fish. And uh, so I can, because this is my prettiest one. So yes, and see. the ladies over there, they represent. There's actually four seasons. The fourth oh, I one see is, it. is, so it's the four seasons. The four seasons, and, that's uh, what I that thought. That was a Christmas present, so yeah. Well, as beautiful as this is, there's another area that I love, and it's a cutting garden. Okay. You yeah. know, Debbie, I myself believe that there's never should be a garden that doesn't have a cutting garden because even though you can see them outside it's so wonderful to take them inside right and and you've designed this yourself geometrically right. and you've placed certain plants in here what do you like well originally in the spring i love the peonies which are all over the place but they are past I their understand. prime and then um i have dahlias that i can get to come back. I figured out a way to make them come back and to bloom twice. So I have really added a lot of dahlias. But then I have some heirloom rubrum lilies yes. in that one that are really old. And then yes. I've just added a lot of Asiatic lilies to have some color in here uh, during the spring. Yeah, this is b backed up by something that really protects them. Tell us about your cryptomerias. Right, the cryptomeria are about 10 years old. I just, I never thought they would get this large, this fast, but they give a lot of texture to the to the grounds, really, when yes. you look at it, because they had uh, a lot. And then, you know, I, I repeat them in the back, and I have, anyway, well, I, I like 
Let's and you know area. something else because that's west. This is north. This is a wonderful windbreak because yes. your bad yes. weather and all in the winter time comes from that direction. Right. So you're creating protection. That's that's correct. For the plants that's that correct. are in I've here. I've tried to, and the Burford Holly do the same thing. Yeah. So yeah, we've got it. We've got it pretty much enclosed. Yes, you do. Debbie, in a garden of this size, and with surrounded by these magnificent trees, you do have some shade also. Right. And as, as we go along through this shaded area here, you've got a lot of wonderful plants, but this is such a beautiful spotlight right here. And I believe you said you have two annuals in this garden. Right. Well, that one, that's a fern, and then my uh, mandevilla. That is remarkable yeah, because people fill in sometimes with annuals, <laughs> but you don't need to. No, well, it's low maintenance. I'd rather not buy them every year. I find that a little bit low maintenance that just came out of your mouth, but <laughs> well, I'll believe you. Lower maintenance. <laughs> oh, that okay. Way. <laughs> and I'm enjoying walking with you because I know that you are the gardener here. It's you yes, yes. from the very beginning. You <laughs> and, and my husband, right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. And in this uh, shaded area, you get to, you are afforded the, the luxury of hostas, aren't you? I have lots and lots of hostas. I like them and they also keep the weeds down. So that's good. That's it's, another reason. It's another it's mulch. Right. Yeah, it still mm -hmm. holds down the moisture. Mm -hmm. It keeps right. it in too. And you, I see you have azaleas and they bloom well in here. They do fine. They do great. You uh -huh. know, this is deciduous, so they right. still get enough sun in the in the early spring to bloom great. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can tell that. And the lilac rope is happy also. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's that's again a way to just uh, less expensive way to line your borders. Well, it, and, it camouflages. Yeah. Right. And strolling through this path, it's it's very cool, and the breeze uh, is in here. So I. Think that you probably enjoy this area that's with right. these two we, chairs we, to sit in. And we sit over there. That's right. That's why. Okay. It's, not, it's the coolest place. I, I want to talk to you about this Solomon seal. Now. Right. Is this uh, native? Because it's not the variegated. No, it is native. It yes. is native. I think I put in my first variegated this year, but I'm not sure where it is. It's just one plant. They're actually relative to the lily of the valleys. They look like that. Well, they they're they're like in that, that. family. And yeah. there's something else that you've included in here that gives you green in the winter time is your helleborus. I love them. I've had those probably 20 years. And, and I so like they, And they self-propagate. They just, they go all over the yard. So that I, makes and it I exciting. let them go, right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're beautiful from, you know, December until, I mean, they're still pretty. So Debbie, I noticed a, uh, interesting sign at the front of your driveway. You are participating in the Nat uh, Natural Wildlife, Wildlife Federation, okay. and they it's I haven't it's an urban wildlife habitat, and so that is encouraging people to in the suburbs to understand that they can enliven their gardens by by adding the three things that animals need, which is food and water and a place to hide. The things that are desirable, the butterflies, the bees, you're looking for pollinators. I added a, even a bat house. So it's just, when you look outside, it doesn't look boring. Yes. It looks very active and fun. There's yes, always something right. to look at. It just makes you want to sit outside. So and that's why I do it and that's why I talk to other people about doing it. Debbie, this alley of white Natchez crepe myrtle is fabulous and it's a good example to me of how it takes time to make a garden. Right. It takes two people willing to work together. Mm -hmm. They may not have the same sight and vision, but they cohesively work together and they, you have created a masterpiece. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.